thanks again for the invitation. And uh, I mean, <clears throat> last week we talked about lecture one, and we introduced the relativity in physics, uh, the concept, as well as some technology that has been used in the detectors and uh, in different experiments at uh, relativistic having collider and also at NHC. Uh, this week, today, we are going to talk about QGP discovery at week signature, as well as the, the future projects and opportunity for the students. I think they need really to look around for different experiments and how they can join them and contribute to physics. Uh, this is the title of the lecture number two, and what I did here, I add my email address here for the people who would like to send email, and I got some emails last week about some students about the lecture number one, and now, and I would like to address this very quickly before I start the lecture. So, I mean, some questions that were very nice, and I, how we can move from the physics that I would like to, that you'd like to do to some kind of building the detectors. This means which is mostly what the transition between physics and the detectors. And to answer to these questions is you know when you do physics and we said you do collisions and you produce particles, we had this for example we showed last time these particles are produced and each one of them is coming from different kind of physics. Okay. This means to build a detector which detects these particles. This is mostly the transition between physics and the detectors. If I want to, for example, here I add the slide here. If I want to study physics, which is mostly has photons or electrons or muons or fine stuff, I build a detector here, which is in the horizontal line, this type of detector. If I want to see to track to do tracking of the electrons or muons or the pi plus and protons and neutrons, I need a tracking detector. If I want energy and stuff, I have to have electromagnetic anomaly. If I want to do hadron, uh, this particle the pines, I put the hadron calorimeter. If I want to look for the muons, I will do the muon chambers. Okay. The tracking can be silicon detector in time of flight. This means the Detector construction is driven by the physics that you would like to study. And the transition between the two is the particle produced from the collisions. This is mostly the line between the two, uh, the two regions, hardware and the physics. Okay? And for the tracking, which is what they ask, what, we, what you can recommend and what is really up to date for technology, I mean, I talk about the things that I know. I'm an expert in the silicon detector for 30 years. And this, if you look here, for example, for the tracking, mostly everybody is using silicon detectors, as you see it here. This is the probability of using silicon detector for the tracking. Mostly every experiment that we have right now for RHC or RIP, they have silicon detector. They have strip, they have a pixel, they have a maps monolithic active pixels and there is a new one that you have come this year is ultra fast silicon detector it can do particle identification which is amazing this means i collect some information and then send it to some students and for the silicon just some quick idea the silicon detector i mean which you can read in the book that i will show before uh, next i mean the basic is the semiconductor silicon detectors which like for example this one here is a silicon detector which is has a readout in x direction and y direction is the basic thing okay and this is the semiconductor huh? and if you don't put any voltage there is nothing there is no electrical field it's like dead material but if you put a, a voltage or a called bias you will create electric field inside here and if the particle comes and you go to the semiconductor you will create a photon, which is interact with the atoms of the semiconductor. Automatically, you will create electron hole. Electron go to the n plus n plus, and the holes goes up, and you collect the charge, which is the charge in x and the charge in y, and you know exactly where is the position of the particle when you go to this, for example, this pixel. 
for example, here you want to use pixel, you have X and you have Y. This is the basic idea of silicon detectors. If you want to know more, we can show the, uh, show the some reference to the to some of the students by email. There is this book which is I use it mostly all the time when they would like to forget something and I would like to know something. I use this book, is semiconductor detector system, and he can give you a very really nice overview about silicon and also the signals. Very important efficiency, the even trades and the readout electronics and everything. And he can talk to you also about the latest silicon detector, pixel, atlas pixel detectors, monolithic active pixel device, which is the maps. It's, I think this is very nice book. This is very nice book about how to learn to use silicon detector and to be uh, uh, to build your expertise beside the physics that you learn, that you can really compete in the future and join in experiments. Okay, and mostly with the latest the find out about the particle identification silicon detector, uh, particle identification using silicon detector. I think this is very nice direction for the future st students and really the leading of physics in the future. Okay. I hope I gave some highlights about my answer to the question that I get by email. And if you have more, please send me an email. Now we move to the second part of the, the lecture is, as I promised, we talk a little bit about the kinematic. We talk about the discovery that we found at the grid, that we are expecting gas of quark neon plasma. We found it now. It's a perfect liquid. It's a liquid. This one has been observed by looking to jet quenching. That matter has been created is dense and opaque. We talk about azimuthal correlation, which is mostly show that medium is dense, and also elliptic flow, which is say that this medium is really liquid. This is really the three signature beside other signature, but this is the major signature. The second thing we have been surprised recently by some finding that maybe in the small system also we create small drops of QGP. This may depend on energy. It has nothing to do with the system size. And this mean has been published recently in Nature. When I went to work in the Quarkonia had probe and cold, I found out that it's really need the lecture and it's really a lot of material that we can introduce about the hard probes because this branch here is to study the properties of the quark neon plasma. It's not the discovery. Properties. And this is really need at least another lecture and a lot of material that you can introduce the basic and also the probes and everything. I hope this one will be in the next conference, uh, African school, that we can talk about it, which is mostly need a full talk of 13 minutes. But from here, I will jump to the RIP and EAC future, I think, which is really students need to know where the physics is heading at the uh, uh, United States, mostly at Brookhaven. OK? Let's talk about the basic. Some kinematic, very simple, that we have. We all the time in physics, we talk about momentum, transverse momentum, parallel momentum, rapidity, pseudo rapidity. This is the four momentum here, which we have mostly. Uh, this is the tensor here, which we have mostly the P0, P1, P2, P2. Mostly, when you say this one, this is called P0, correspond to the energy. P1 and P2, we call them Px, Py, which is correspond. And P3 is the momentum of the particle in direction of the beam direction. Okay, they call it Pz or P parallel, it depends who's talking. Okay, and this is the energy, and and here you have the velocity. Okay, this is the velocity in the in your reference frame, which we know that is the add. In this, if you have two particles, you just add the velocity. But if you go to relativistic, we know is beta, which is v over c, and the c equal one is mostly this is the formula v of v one over c plus v two over c, and you add this is the relativistic. Okay of the two particles. And here we end up, end up with 
the rapidity, the good it must be the sum of both of them with the parabolic functions with this formula. And at the end, this is what we call the rapidity. When you see the rapidity, so people talking about it is mostly a parabolic conjunct, which is a beta, which is mostly this one here, yeah? and you can be developed like this. Okay, this is just a kinematic, and this is the quantity when you see in x axis in any plots talking about rapidity, I mean this, which is mostly velocity of the particles. You can express this rapidity this is another way, okay? Which is mostly, I'm gonna get a bit everybody from this one here. We can talk about transformation and we can go to mostly in the limits and you can end up with rapidity. The formula this is mostly what we are using in every express plus pz divided by energy minus pz have uh, logarithmic, okay? And this is, you can use it if you have a which gives you the momentum of the particles as well as the energy of the particles. This is the only way you can talk about rapidity. We need to detect that we give you the energy of 200 GV. I can find the rapidity is around 5 that's okay? And this is mostly driven by energy. Okay. This means if you want to build a detector who can cover all this region, it has to the rapidity of this detector, mostly full coverage, almost 5 that's 4 or 6. Much better. Okay? I talk about the momentum in this formula here. I talk about the energy, PZ stuff, how this one is. This is very important that all the students need to know, okay? This is the basic one. When people talk about transverse momentum, transverse mass, transverse energy, well, this is what they mean by it. PT is the, mom the momentum of the particle Px and Py, which is PT amplitude is the square root of these two quantities, okay? With Px squared plus Py uh, power two, okay, square. And transverse momentum, this is what it means. And give the energy of the Hello. Hello. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. I was talking. Yes, uh, now I hear you. Ah, what, which slide I was? I don't understand why it has been muted. You were muted? I thought that it was... Your slide, your slide just disappeared. Okay, thank you very much for letting me this. Could you tell me... Which slide do you see yeah, anything just, now? Just put it back. I, I, you are not sharing yet. Ah, sharing is gone. Okay. Okay, scroll. Yeah, go a little bit. I think it's. Yeah, this. I can go. No, you, yeah, I think slide 14, that was when I last, uh, yeah, this, yeah, you can restart from here. Yeah, this is fine, the rapidity. Okay, the thank you. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I don't, I didn't know what's happened, how this uh, screen share happened. This okay. <clears throat> what I was is, I mean, we talk about the rapidity here, which is a function of the velocity. But you can express the rapidity here, which is shown in the previous slide, as function of the energy and also the momentum, which is like here, pz. This means that if you note the rapidity here, you need to know, you need to have a detector who can give you the energy and the momentum 
of the particles. Otherwise, you cannot define the rapidity. Okay, this is very important. Detector and physics quantity it has to be really used correspondingly. If I take this formula here, and I say for a rich energy, a gold gold, 200 GB per nucleon, I can find the rapidity is around 5.4. This means I can build a detector. If I want all the particles detected, I need to cover this rapidity region, which is 5.4, okay? Slide 15. The students really need to know these quantities because when you go to a conference or any places, everybody is talking about transverse momentum, transverse mass, transverse energy. This is mostly the basic plot sometimes in different uh, the physics plots. Transverse momentum is mostly we call PT, which is, uh, is uh, mostly dependent on PX, PY. This means is the momentum of the particle in the x direction, and this is the momentum of the particle in y direction. PT transverse is the square root of these two momentum power two. Okay. This is the transverse. transverse mass is the same thing, but this is the other definition. It depends on the mass of rest plus transverse momentum, which we talk about it here. Okay. You can also write the energy, and you can there is a uh, Relation, uh, relation between energy, mass, and PZ. And this is the all relation between them. This is something is a tool that we have to use mostly every time when we do the analysis and making the plots. And also the transverse energy is the sum of energy times the sin, the angle of the, the theta. Okay, and this is all the, the information that we need. Because this one here can be used, as I showed before, in the definition of the rapidity. This means rapidity and momentum are correlated. However, sometimes building detectors, which is needed to detect a track of the particle, the angle of the particle, the energy of the particle, and stuff, you need a lot of detectors. Sometimes you don't have a money to build all these detectors that you can have information about the particle. What we found out also that sometimes you can just build the detector what you know if you have the track and you have the angle of the particles you can define a quantity called pseudo rapidity which is mostly in a relativistic at mid rapidity region eta equal y because the energy of the particle and the momentum are relatively the same in this limit okay this means sometimes the pseudo rapidity need only a detector which give you the angle of emission of the particle in space uh, is a polar angle, which is this one. Okay, and this is what we use mostly I in. Think, I think we, in the discussion, we agree that. Uh, that would be possible. Do you still hear me? Katavi. Hello? Hello, Katavi, you still hear me? No. He has, uh, okay, let me continue. Let me continue. And uh, I hope yes, you can. Really. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I was thinking that we have a uh, front end. Thank you very much. Let me continue. Okay. This means you have some detectors that you don't have capability to define the mass and the momentum of the particles. What you use, you so use the pseudo rapidity, which is defined like this as function of theta. Okay. We talk about the momentum, rapidity, pseudo rapidity was the next step. Now we talk about centrality. How, for example, when you go to the PP collision at Alashi, nobody talk about high energy, in high energy physics about centrality because they have just proton proton. But when you go to heavy ion collisions, you have 78 proton in every uh, nucleus, okay? And you are going to collide all this against each other. And 
this means there is some protons or neutrons inside that are going to participate. Some of them, they are not going to participate. This is why the centrality in heavy ion is crucial. This is the two nucleus where they are going to collide. Huh? And they are coming. You can really, if you come like this, the distance between the center of this one and center of this one is called B, which is the impact parameter, okay? If you bring this one up and this one, when I say B, equals zero, this means there is no distance between the center of this nucleus and this nucleus. This means they call this one central collision. Central collision, this means correspond to B equals zero. This means they are face to face. If I go far away and B become big, from the center, this one they call peripheral collision. This means they are touching each other. They are not face to face. When they these two go into each other, we produce particles. The particles that you have here, the nucleus, they hit each other. They call participants. And the one they are not hitting each other far away. But this is coming from this guy here, and this one coming from this guy here. They call them participants. This means we have participants. Uh, participants here, and we have spectators here, which is not down to computers. Okay? And this is the definition of each other. I hope this is clear. Okay? The same thing here, what's happened, how we define centrality. As we hit each other, you have the spectators here, you have the participants here. What's happened here, you have a lot of produced particles that you can see from the detectors. What you plot like this is a number of particles which you detect as function of the particle also. This is the yield of the particles. And this is the, the particle that you have the tracking, okay? You have this kind of distribution. What you do is slice this distribution. More, the highest particle you get, the more centrality, because more these two hit each, more these two hit each other, you produce more particle. More B equals zero, produce more particle. Here you have, you see, 500, you have more particles, and you have less, less, less. More the B become equal to zero, you have high number of This is equal 5%, 10%, 20% of centrality. This means in the future, in the next slide, when I took 5%, this means it's really the most central, hitting each other face to face. They produce a lot of particles. When I say peripheral, you have less particles, you have between 100 here, this is the number of particles. And this is called peripheral, central peripheral. This is not just enough because what you do, you need to extract this number of participants by using the models based on the slices here. Okay? And this is what you call deficiency. I don't want to go there. You're using the model of hygiene and you collect the number of participants. The highest end part, the most central collision. Okay? But I hope this one is clear. This is first plot from physics. What you do is you look all charge produced particle in your detector and you plot them as function of transverse momentum. And transverse momentum we already defined in the other slide is the square root of px plus py square uh, power two for each one of them. Okay? Px square plus py square and the whole thing is under square root. When you plot this, as you see here in the plots, the highest number of particles, they call this is the 5%, the most central. And the lowest particle called the peripheral. This means they're hitting each other a little bit. And here they're hitting each other mostly on the top of each other. Okay? And what we say that the particle which is have a momentum less than one or almost one GV, they call them the low PT particle. It's true, because they low PT. But they call them also the soft particles. This means they don't really have high momentum. Okay? The region which is high here, they call them high PT region, and they mostly they have small cross-section. And the between is the intermediate region. Okay? This means when you say high PT, this means I'm talking about 6 to 12 GV. When it's called low PT, this means I'm talking about 0 to 1 GV. Intermediate region is between the two. This is for heavy ion. I mean, when you talk about the high energy physics, people are mostly talking about 100 GV transverse momentum or 200 GV because they are looking really for the hard 
processes, which is mostly this one here. But they are looking, they are doing PP collisions, a single proton. All the energy is carried by one element. Here, in heavy ion, the energy is carried by a lot of elements, a lot of protons, okay, and neutrons. This means it's different physics. This is mostly the produced charge particle. This is centrality dependence, most central peripheral, okay? H plus, H minus, this means charge hadrons. This means you take the pions, the protons, all particles, they have charge, okay? And you can slice your PT region and you can do the physics in every region. You I would like to study physics, uh, soft physics. I do the PT. It should be less than 1 GV. I want to go the high PT physics. I go, for example, 5 GV and up to 12 GV and up. Okay? This means I slice the PT range. As we do in high energy physics, they look for the PT range uh, that they will have. I show already so, here. Sorry, <laughs> Prof. Can I, have, can I ask a short question on the previous oh, slide? Um, so, <laughs> am I right in saying oh, that the, the, the softer the, softer, the, 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 the the, the collisions, the higher the higher chance you have of having central collisions. No, no, I mean no. Uh, when you talk, you know, when when you have in the beginning when you do the collisions, you defined uh, mostly the number of. Uh, you, you are saying that when you have a soft physics, a soft low PT, you house the high most central collision. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's dependent on the cross section. You know, every centrality here, you see here? Yeah. Every collision has a soft, has a, uh, has a hard, and has the intermediate collision. Okay? You see what I mean? For it just mean for every collision, okay, for every collision, you have the three processes. You understand? Yeah. This means when you do the collision, let's say take central collision, huh? you produce the three regimes. You don't produce only one regime. Let's say you have more central, you have only soft. No, you have a soft and you have a hard and you have in between. Okay. So I think, however, the hard one, the cross section is a small, okay? okay? And the soft one is high. Let me give you more information. Mostly the hard processes, the high PT, okay, are coming from initial collision. This means sometimes it's happening before the collision. It's happening inside the one is coming in. You see what I mean? We call the hard processes. Before they hit each other. Oh, okay. In the, and or in the or in the beginning when they start, this is the called hard processes and this is a soft the soft is mostly at the end of the collision and the hard is in the initial in the beginning okay this is why the cross section is different between the two is that clear uh, well i'm not i'm not really understanding why you, why why you'd have um like hard collisions before the particles collide? At the, at the time when the collision is going to happen, you know, you have this energy inside. It's not before, I'm talking, not before, for example, when they come in. At the beginning, this energy is mostly inside the nucleus, yes? Yes. There is, quark, there is the quarks inside, you remember? Yeah. And these, all the things as high energy, these guys, they are interacting from each other, you know this? Yes. Just before the interaction, the other one is coming. They are going to hit each other, okay? Okay. There is interaction between the proton from the other guy and the proton from the other guy, and the force is high energy. Oh, okay, okay. You can build the new particles, like, for example, let's say, uh, you can build is mostly formed at the initial state. The initial state, when they are going to hit each other, is very strong interaction. Yeah. Because this energy is inside there, and it wants to go somewhere, and they hit each other. And you have nucleons, uh, gluons produced. You remember? 
fermions, you can have high density of the gluons in the before they go. Uh, this is mostly what you call hadronization state, and the cross section is small. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, no, I'm cool. Yeah. Right, thanks. Okay. We said all these particles are produced, we have different regime. And we show this plot. This is the pseudo rapidity. This is the quantity that I talked about it before. And we call this one mid rapidity region because it equals zero. And we explain why because it's in the middle. Mid rapidity region in the middle. Okay. And you produce all this. And as you see here, most of the particles are produced at central collision because we have more. more Overlapping between the two nucleus count each other. And this one gave us some information about the energy density, which is mostly in the next slide we'll talk about it. That is higher than PCD, that is PCD, and this is a first signature that maybe medium PCD is formed at a tree. Okay, this is the mostly the integrated, this number here is the integrated of the particles. In this region here, for given centrality, I can take this. I do the integration from here to here. I get the number and I put it in y axis. Okay, and this is mostly for the six percent central position. And this is the Alash here result, and it has been already predicted. Okay, we talk about particle produced in the collisions. What else we can do about it? We can do the, for example, looking at the particle yield and what we can learn from this. I mean, if we use ground canonical uh, ensemble of particle, but at the equilibrium, local equilibrium, which is called Holtzman uh, formula, we assume that all the produced particles are in one temperature and also in one chemical potential is moving, okay? And this is using ground uh, connection on ensemble. Okay. By this in this formula here, we can say, okay, I'm, I detect the antiprotons uh, anti and the protons, and I also the ions and protons. What I do, I take this ratio of particles, and I know that I can, for this ratio, I can use this formula, which is from this uh, ensemble here. And I do the ratio between the two, and this is, is defined by this formula as function of energy, which I have, but I don't have mu and t, okay? And this is p bar over p is defined by this. This is two parameters, okay? I need mu and the t. What I have to do, I take another ratio, count to protons, and I have two equations, two numbers, I have two parameters, I can extract mu and t, okay? And this is here what we have the particle ratio for this two. You can plot all these ratios here, and you can extract at the end. You found out that all of them is mostly at the freeze out, which is at the end. The temperature is 176, and UB is 41, okay? And all this is produced by the models. This is very important. Okay. This means I know at the end of the, the hydronization how many particles produce, and I can extract the temperature at freeze out and also the chemical potential. This is not to do with the particles, but what we can learn from this, from all these charge particles that I show here, from this ratio that I'm extracting. Is there something else that I can do with the particle which can tell me not about the end of the collision, but can tell me what's happening inside the collision in the medium? Okay, and this is what we have to do next. This particular rational stuff, they don't tell me about the medium, tell me only about the final state. No, I don't talk about what's happening happen in the beginning of the, the collisions and what's happened in the medium uh, particles and making some physics quantity this means what we measure a thousand of particles what we can do about it what the information can we extract about the pgp which is mostly the main point of this talk 
and can we look up at the connectivity? This is and here what I show you that all the measurement that I'm going to show next has been really major discovery for the relatives EVI and Collider, and as well it was a CERN Courier, and they showed that the discovery of the quark plasma and this plasma is not gas. We are thinking that you break the quarks inside the hadrons, the quarks are flying, the gluons are flying, and everything is in space and all stuff. Now, the whole thing is not, fly, is not a gas, it's a liquid. It's like a perfect liquid. And this is what I put all this information. You can read by yourself. And, the thing. and this signature has been confirmed by four experiments. Not two experiments. Two experiments is good enough. Like you have an LHC, you have Atlas and CMS, they can confirm this observation from each other and you have a discovery. Here at RIG, we have four experiments in the beginning and after that we left two. Okay. What's this major discovery? One quantity we before that has been already talked about a long time ago by the physicist, by the theoretician. They said there is a parameter called the nuclear modification factor. What this factor here? This factor called RAA. I don't go to the formula. What is mostly here is do you take a ratio of the particles producing by them by the rush uh, by the the particle produced in PP. This means you want to see how gold, gold is different than PP. Knowing then PP, you cannot really produce quark non plasma because it's elementary particle. It's mostly nucleon nucleon collisions. But gold gold, we have maybe a medium. If you they said if you plot this R, which is here, or is PP as function of transverse momentum, it's been had been talked about. Long ago. This regime here, the behavior should be like this. If R less than one is a soft physics, if his collision around one is a hard physics, a hard physics we have hard collisions between PP and gold gold, and they should be in the top of each other because it's normalized by the number of collision in gold gold to PP and be normalized. Okay? This is what we expect. If this is there is nothing, okay? Expression here. The question is, what's happening if there is a expression here? When we plot this one here, this is RAA from gold gold divided by PP. This is gold gold divided by PP. And here you plot this one as function of centrality, okay? Like this one here. This is for pi zero, okay? And also for charge hydro pi zero, you can go very high momentum. You have, I mean, you have more particles. Okay, it, this is the peripheral collisions. If I go from peripheral to central, what's happened? And I put this RAA. Look, I'm going to central. More the central collision comes, more the rush should go below one. It's going below. It's going below. Until I reach, this is mid. If I go down, so the most central collision, 0 to 10 percent. It's a big difference between peripheral and central collisions. What I see here, that's mostly they are expressed by a factor of five compared to PP political uh, assumption that it should be the same. This means that this is impression when it go to gold. This is it was the first indication that this medium has been produced in gold gold and produced and suppress all the particles. This medium is so opaque, he doesn't let the particle come out. He suppresses them inside. More the collision is very high. Essentially here, this is the charge hadron. So this is the pi zero. This expression by a factor of five compared to the one that I showed before has to be equal to one. This is what he called jet quenching. And this is gold gold at 200 GV. The question is, this is unique to energy 200 GV, GV or not? Or something, what happens if I go to low energy, 22 GV, 62 GV, 200 GV, and stuff? It looks like, like if you go to 222 GV, 
we don't have this kind of expression. You have to go to high energy. It looks, if you go to 62 GV and up, you start to have this pressure there for high PT. This means there is energy dependence of this medium which is created. This is really very strong indication and confirmation of the jet quenching. Okay? Let's me, and this is the most central occlusion, 0.5%, it's most pressed. This is the same thing, but is this is for, for example, unique measurements for the pi zero. What happened is what ha if we take all particles here and we take we like to take a look of our different expression here. If you take the pi zeros which I show here and stuff, I see also heavy heavy quarks, the A plus E minus coming from heavy B mesons or other particles or the D are also expressed. And there is some mass dependence of the suppression, but there is a suppression, there is mid particle, except one is the photons. The photons, as we showed before in this stuff, the photons are created in the beginning and they go initial state and they go through the medium and they have no interaction as we expected. And this is true. This is photons are close to one. Okay, this means the measurement has some meaning and is telling us exactly what happened inside. That the medium produced here is opaque, and in order the particles should come out, it really has to have a lot of momentum. And the photons produced in the beginning of the collisions, they go through the mediums and they have that. Is this is just measure? unique to the rig in SBS and what happened at LHC. LHC came later and measured the same thing at higher energy, which is the, uh, the things here. LHC is here because they can go to the, as you say, they can go to the higher PT because they have higher energy. They can go up to 100 GV. And you see there is a suppression here. And they agree with the measurement, the blue one, which is the rig which is go, re go up to 20 GV, I'll actually go up to 100 GV. There is a suppression here, okay? This means the Alashi and the re confirm that in lead lead or in gold gold at higher energy, you produce a medium which is suppressed the particles. But if you go to the low energy SPS, you found there is no suppression. This means something really created a trick and Alashi pollution. For the Pfizer. Okay, this is one strong indica indication for the creation of quark gluon plasma and we call jet quenching. Okay, the question here if you see it in gold, gold on PP, let's take a D gold. Do you see this jet quenching to the D gold? Is there a medium and the D gold has been created? This is in the left is gold, gold, and this is the D gold on the right. Okay, I'm going to take a look about the nuclear modification part as function of centrality. And I see from the peripheral, and I go down to most central collisions. What's happening for both system? I put them side by side that you can see. Let's go to central collision. 70, 80 peripheral work must be touching each other. We go face to face, most central. You see here what's going? Gold, gold is going down. Big gold is going up. See, it's a big difference. Going to most central collision. There is more produced particle in the D gold, there is no jet quenching. This means what? There is no medium. Okay? And as you see, the comparison between the two are the same centrality. Gold gold is pressed, D gold is not pressed because there is no medium created in the D gold. Okay? And this is a difference between the two actually, because this is mostly deuteron versus gold. You need to have a lot of participants. Okay. Good. This is confirmed, and let's take a look about two particle correlation. This means I want to see back-to-back -back particles. One is going in one direction, and the other one in another direction, okay? If there is a really medium, I don't see the other particle. If there is a there is medium, uh, if there is medium, the particle will be disappear. If there is no medium, the particle will come out. I take this particle coming here as a trigger, and I will look for the, the corresponding particle here, okay? This is zero, and I plot the two plot. This is 
mostly is going to treat everything. This is the direction of this one. If there is another particle produced, here is the second. If I look for the peripheral collision, okay, I see PP is the black one, very nice. The two particles has been detected and nothing has been lost, okay? And here, because more wider than this one, because this is the trigger one and the other one is a cone, okay? And you see the PP and you see the peripheral collisions, okay? Let me go to the more central collision. If I go to more central collision for gold gold, I don't see the peak the other side. I see that the peak, the second peak, is completely suppressed. What do this mean? This is an indication that the medium is created only a more central collision when there is or overlapping and there is a lot of participants. I'm trying to say. A medium created, the sec first one, you see it here, the peak. The second one is absorbed by the medium. This is confirmed that the medium is opaque and has high density, which is can express completely the particles, okay? And this is mostly has been shown also for the B-gold, two particle correlation. This is, you can see one jet here, four gold. Gold and stuff, but you the other side, you come to the D gold, you see it, you have like PP, but gold gold is completely flat. The medium is created only in gold gold at 200 GV and is very opaque, and all the particles will be met in this medium. Okay, this is what we call a major discovery, a trick which also absorbs at LHC at the end with higher energy, and this has been published in 2003. And also, there's a Nobel Prize for some theories about the strong interaction and the that that works in 2004. Okay. After 2003, we mostly started to study the, the properties of the matter. But the question is, can we see this confirmation by using other measurements? For example, let's take a look about the anisotropy distribution of the part. This one, it go like this, this one go like this, and you have the bulk here, and this one is produced particles in the phi space. Can we use Fourier transformation and to take a look about the arm shape and see how the particles are distributed? Is this space here, the region which is we have it here, and this is in the momentum space, how this medium can expand? Okay? And can we use a model to reproduce these particles? And can the model tell us something about this expansion of the quark linear plasma? Okay? And this is what we do. This is what you call elliptic flow. We took this one, we measured, we looked at the particles in the phi space. I mean, in the, when you have a detector, you know the phi, and you have a the, the polar angle of the particle. And you can do that. It's very easy. Okay? And this of elliptic flow, if you use the models you can have provide estimates about the pressure of the medium the gradient of the medium and also you can talk about thermalization of the medium because we are comparing the model to the data and you can have some insight also about transverse and the longitude and dynamic of the expansion of this guy here, of the medium okay and you can also have information about equation of state of this medium, and you can have viscosity if you use hydrodynamic model. Okay, we have models from the theories which you can compare to the data. Good. Let's see. We took and we measure V2 as function of PT for the for the low PT region because this is where you have a soft physics, and this is what the models need: hydrodynamic model. Okay. We found out that the magnitude and the mass pt increase we depend on the pH and the, on the, the particles, which is very nice separation here. Huh? The highest, the, 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 the heaviest the particle it is, the, the, the flow, the expansion of the V2 of the particle is lowest and this region here, and you have the particle going up to something to you. The hydrodynamic model is applicable only in the soft region. When we put by 
hydrodynamic model in some countries produce the data. Hydrodynamic model never produced the data before in heavy ion collision at all. And this time he can produce, but he can produce the model only if he have equation of state like PCB, uh, lattice PCB, and if entropy is very small, zero that one. This is the, the condition of hydrodynamic model. Equation of state and also a viscosity and entropy is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is a smaller viscosity or over entropy. is smaller than water. Okay? This means, this is what you call near perfect fluid. They don't call it fluid, but you call it perfect fluid because it's too small, the viscosity over entropy. And this is an indication that the medium created, which is opaque and dense, it's a liquid. It's not gas. By using the models, this is what you call the perfect fit. And this is the second major discovery. Okay? okay. Now we know how we discover quark ion plasma. And it's just, um, all the, there is other measurements which you can talk, but I think it's too much. Two of them is good enough. Now, what happened recently? You know, things progress. We talk recently some system without we don't like a proton gold, neutron gold and helium gold. And we looked also, is there any connectivity in this media? But in this with these systems, we don't have jet quenching. We have only flow because jet quenching requires a lot of particles and a lot of uh, uh, energy. The question is when you look elliptic flow, where you found there is also behavior, there is collectivity. Eh? And this is what was really interesting. That maybe in the small system, we are not creating a medium, but we are creating drops of quark ion plasma, small things. We call them droplet. Drop is droplet, okay? And this one has been published recently in the nature, okay? Recently, I think it's 2000, yeah, 2019, just last year, okay? We submitted by my, our group, uh, Phoenix. And we say, okay, guys, we see this information and we publish it to our physics community that we share this information with the whole field, with from Alashi and Rick and all over the world, that there is something going on in this small system and maybe there is some drops. And we compare to the models, and also the models has the equation of state and has a small viscosity, and they can produce particles. When you found something interesting and something, can, you have to publish it to share with the community that they can tune their models and also trying to learn something new. And this is what we did. Okay, and this is really publishing the nature, and this is in nature physics. Is really you need to have. It's more higher than physical review letter. It's really mostly a big discovery that, that the physics community needs to make attention. And here I talk about the rig, I talk about the discoveries. Now I'm going to move to the next phase, which is EIC. Is there any question about this part? Or I can move and I can ask questions at the end. If there is urgent question, I can answer about the discovery. That would be interesting. Okay. Let me move to the second. We move from the rig to electron ion collider future project. Okay. We talk about this one here. Okay. We have the rig is mostly have in the beginning four experiments and after that two experiments. And we have two rings where the particles are circulating and after they are colliding in the experiment. This is was from 2000 up to 2016. And after that, we move to the rig two is going to be a new experiment called S Phoenix is going to run from 2016 to 2023. And this one is mostly here. This experiment is going to have mostly a new regime of energy comparable to LHC. We want to overlap with LHC. And this is where we build this detector, as you see here. 
particle can go up to 40 GV. Right now, we can detect particles mostly with high PT up to 20 GV. And unless she go down to something 30 or something 20, we need to have something overlapping to see the transition between Alashi and, uh, and uh, Rick about the transverse momentum. And also, we want to study jet uh, structure. We want to study other physics, which is require really high performance of silicon, of the detectors. And this is what we build. The new detectors called the MAP, like Alashi. We built, uh, I'm working on Enterman uh, silicon tracker. This one here, this is what I'm building. And this is the PC and each one of them. And this experiment is going to run from 2023 up to 2029. Why after 2029? Because after 2029, we are going to start a new collider, which is we are building right now using the rig in the same time that we are taking the data. Okay. This year, the US department decided that this electron ion collider is going to be built at Brookhaven National Laboratory and collaboration with different all groups all over the world from Alas, from the LRC, from Europe, from any continent, from Africa. There is also some group from, uh, from Africa doing the experiments with us. There's some group from Asia, Chinese, Japanese, mostly all collaborators from all over the world because physics, everybody's involved, okay? You need just to be interested and participate and contribute. And you United States is putting two and a half billion dollars in this project, which is already started right now. Right now we are making meetings, we are build, trying to build the detectors, the concept, and the physics behind it. Okay, this is very good opportunity that the people, essentially the students, uh, by 2030, and this project will start to take the data. This means we need the students to start to contribute now and participate now. They can take over leading effort of this project in the future, okay? And you need really to submit your application for these positions. We have, if you go to Brookhaven webpage, there's a lot of jobs, and you can really submit your application if you think you can participate in building detectors and doing the physics. The sooner you start, I think it's the better for all the things. This is the physics for EIC. This is just glimpse, okay? EIC can uniquely address the profound question. Okay, about nucleon and neutrons and protons and how they are assembled into form the nuclei of atoms. One of the questions that I like a lot, I talk it from uh, in talks, how does the mass of the nucleon arise? This is really a profound question. How does the spin of the nucleon arise too? Because nucleon, they have a spin. What is the origin of the spin? Hmm? What are the emerging property of the dense system of nucleons? We talk about nucleons with two quarks. This means this EIC is really going to address a fundamental questions about the nucleons, which we need. And this is a very, uh, I mean, you can go to this uh, book, which is in the Google Functions Reports, and also here he showed the particles, which is, uh, and how does QCD generate the nucleon mass? This is really, uh, I think, is very important field that you can understand the QCD matter, how it is created. I think is, this is obvious step for the quark gluon plasma understanding. Got it. And this is what they are going to build. There will be two experiments as usual. This is the role. One single experiment and you by a single uh, uh, discovery by a single experiment is not enough. You need at least two experiments to come from the observation. This means we are going to keep this blue and, and we are going to add another ring for electron, such a way we can collide electron with uh, proton, electron with ion, proton against ion. This means you have three choices. You can play between electrons and protons and ion. And you can see the difference between the system and the same energy. And this is mostly what they are going to study, is the structure or inside the nucleon. We talk about the three quarks and we talk about the gluons. We are going deep and deep now, okay? And this is, I will show here exactly that people can understand how really this, uh, as you see here, the yellow one is the ion, the, the, the electron is the red one, and also the, 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 the 
electron, the electron come in here, and also you can accelerate also the proton in this pile, just in this ring. And you will come, this is the new, before we come from the tondam here, now we have a new source for electrons, which is coming from here, go to EGS, and go to the ring. Okay. And energy can be more higher, you know. For a proton, proton atric, you can go to 500 GV. But gold will go to 200 GV. This means you can go to a higher, moment, uh, higher energy. At this moment, we have only a concept. Nothing has been built. The EAC is moving, the collider, but the detector, we are ready and, and uh, uh, right now uh, discussing what kind of detector we would like to build. And every group is coming with a new idea. I want this with our EMCAL and silicon detector, the other one concept, the Jefferson lab. This is from S Phoenix that we have right now that we are building. And also Argon has a silicon swag. This means there is a lot of opportunity, there is a lot of uh, detectors to build and there is excellent physics behind it. This is the schedule that you would like. I mean, I took it from Abidish Pandi, my colleague from Brookhaven. And this is mostly the uh, starting CV0 already. 2019 last year and the detector project will end i mean the collider project will end by 2029 and we hope to start to take first collision in 2030 this means this is really the branch that uh, if anybody is interested really you should submit your cv and apply for these positions and try to get uh, contributing the physics detector and the, fuse, uh, and the physics in the future. I think this is all I have for the lecture number two. And I think I hope it was useful for you and you can learn at least a little bit from it, not all of it. If you get all of it, this is amazing. I will be very happy. But if you have any questions, please let me know and I'm listening. Thank you very much for your attention. Hi, Rashid. Uh, thanks a lot again for this uh, comprehensive lecture. This is. Uh really appreciated for your effort and time. And I also hope that uh, we'll have you in person at one of the ASPs uh, who's post uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in the meantime, we can go to the discussion session. Um, so um, anybody who has a question, you want to ask your question uh, directly, um, I am looking at the chat, but I'm not sure I see um, any question that has been hanging. Uh, Hola, you asked your question already, right? Yeah, I've already asked my question, and the one that I wrote, I've, like, I've already seen the answer to it. So. All right. So um, anybody else has any questions? Um, I think uh, Jesperi. Hi, hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can I ask one question? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, what conclusions can be drawn from the V2PT plots? Like how we are Which? expecting a QGB so V2PT elliptic flow with respect to transverse momentum plot? Yeah. So. You you talk about this plot here. Yeah, so what conclusions are we making from this plot? The conclusion, listen, before in heavy ion collision, before the rip, this is the first thing that you have to do. Thank you. Yeah, all right. So, okay, uh, wait, uh, yeah, uh, see that there's a new message down here. Oh, okay, everybody say thank you. All right, uh, okay, thanks everybody, and uh, have a good week. Bye bye. Yeah, thanks. Ciao, bye.